I have in my possession a secret map by the planners of the new world order. Because the global order is changing again. A new world order. Brexit referendum is non-binding. UK Parliament, not voters, has final say. All the fuss and bother about Brexit largely ignores its non-binding status, Parliament, not voters, deciding if Britain stays or leaves the European Union. The latter extremely unlikely, writes Stephen Lindman from Global Research on this 23rd day of June 2016. Writing in the Financial Times, British lawyer David Allen Green explained, Brexit voting is advisory, not mandatory. Parliament has the final say. MPs, members of Parliament, can legally disregard the public's will either way. They alone empowered to decide the path Britain chooses. What happens ahead is a matter of politics, not law, and it will come down to what is politically expedient and practicable, says Green. Various options exist, including supporting Thursday's outcome, ignoring it, or renegotiating another deal and putting that to another referendum, repeating the process until voters eventually vote the right way what's best for moneyed interests, not them, like the Rothschilds Bank of England, for example. That's the moneyed interest being spoken of there. The moneyed interests of the hidden dynasty of economics, the Kenites. Green highlighted key points. Member states can choose how to vote on withdrawal by referendum, parliament, or other means. The withdrawal process begins with formal notification once given the member state and the EU are stuck with it. Brussels could come up with some muddling fudge which holds off the two-year deadline or a new treaty amendment could be adopted. Politics alone will drive what happens ahead, not the will of the people. Britain is no more democratic than America, nor are the EU countries. Special interests decide things. Whatever they want, they get. However voting turns out, government policy is to remain in the EU, said Green. Leaving would require Prime Minister David Cameron invoking Article 50, unlikely given his vocal opposition to Brexit. So there you have it. Does this mean anything at all prophetically? I think it does because, again, we're analyzing this five months that we're now in as a type of the actual five-month-long hour of temptation beginning with May 1st and ending with the end of September. And we looked at this last year, and it fit pretty perfectly, I thought, ending with Hurricane Joaquin at the end of September, and that's Jehoiakim in Spanish. And you can see in Ezekiel chapter 1, if you look into the Spanish, Hurricanado is used there in place of whirlwind, and Joaquin is Jehoiakim. And you see that in Jeremiah 24, which is talking about the seventh trumpet, which is what happens at the end of the actual five-month-long hour of temptation, is the seventh trumpet sounds, and the true Christ returns, and that's when the parable of the fig tree is ultimately ultimately fulfilled. If you were to read Jeremiah 24, you would see it mentions Jehoiakim, and you see two baskets of figs, because it's harvest time, that's why they're in baskets and not on trees, before the temple of the Lord, which is the true Christ. He is the temple of the Lord. And these two baskets of figs are the same thing as the wheat and the tares that are separated at the harvest, which is the end of the world, the seventh trumpet. So with this EU referendum, Brexit as it's known, looking at the timing of it, which is about three weeks before the middle of this May through September five-month period that we're looking at as a type, hypothetically, perhaps this marks the beginning of the deadly wound in that actual five-month period, whenever that happens. Will it be May through September? We don't know. But if you look at your companion Bible, in Revelation chapter 9, it says May through September is the term of the locust, and so it is. And as you know, Satan appears in the middle of that five-month-long hour of temptation. Not that it'll be May through September, we don't know that, but we do know he does appear in the middle of that five-month-long hour of temptation, and that we're not in a one-world political system until Satan and his angels are cast out of heaven unto the earth. That's the woe of the fifth trumpet. So there has to be a one-world political system before there can be a deadly wound. But looking at what's going on here as a type, 
perhaps marking the time frame of the deadly wound and where it might come from. And if you look at Daniel chapter 11, it apparently does come from the king of the south, which is Jacob, the Christian nations, in my opinion. And verse 25 of Daniel chapter 11 is talking about that first half hour, the first two and a half months before Satan has appeared as the false Christ. You have that political beast written of in Revelation chapter 13, and he shall stir up his power, Satan shall, before he appears as the false Christ. He doesn't appear until Daniel 11:31 which is the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial. In the middle of the five months, in the midst of the week, as we know from Daniel 9.27, but it's not seven years anymore. It's not a week of years anymore. It's five months. It's been shortened, as we know from Revelation chapter 9. So Daniel 11.25 says, And he shall stir up his power and his courage against the king of the south, the king of the south being the Christian nations, Jacob, the king of the north being Esau, but the he that stirs up his power is the vile person, Satan, whenever he's cast out of heaven unto the earth. The dragon, which is one of Satan's names, as you know from Revelation chapter 12. And if you went on to read Revelation 13, it should really say in the first verse, and the dragon stood upon the sand of the sea, or he stood, as you can see in your companion Bible, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the names of blasphemy. And these ten crowns, signify ten kings, ten fallen angels that are cast out of heaven with Satan at the beginning of that five-month-long hour of temptation. And as we know from Revelation 17, they reign one hour with the beast. So the political beast is for a half hour, that is to say two and a half months, then it's wounded to death just before Satan appears, in my opinion, in the middle of that hour of temptation, because you see a half hour written of in Revelation chapter 8, verse 1, and then the remaining two and a half months, the second half hour is the religious beast, because it goes from being a political one world system to a religious one world system once Satan appears, as you can see in Daniel 11:31, And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. That's the Kenites and their four hidden dynasties of education, economics, politics, and religion. And you have to go read Daniel chapter 7 along with this to completely understand. And his feet were as the feet of a bear, also mentioned in Daniel chapter 7. That's talking about the king of the north, Esau, also known as Edom, which means red, that red nation, the communistic, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And that's the Christian nations, the king of the south, Jacob. Jacob. The twelve tribes became the Christian nations, and Christ came from the twelve tribes of Israel. And the dragon, that Satan, gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Now, this word seat is thronos in the Greek, and you'll see in Revelation chapter 16 in the fifth vial, which is the deadly wound, it's poured out upon the seat of the beast. And after that comes, of course, the sixth vial, which is when Satan appears. And I saw one of his heads, as it were, wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. It was wounded to death, but then it was healed when Satan appeared, and everybody thought that Jesus had returned, except for those with the seal of God in their forehead. And all the world wandered after the beast. And they worshiped the dragon. They worshiped Satan, thinking that he was Jesus. This is when he appears as Antichrist, which gave power unto the beast. And he would have had to have been here in order to give power unto that political beast. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Because it's a one-world peace system. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. The same thing is said of the little horn in Daniel chapter 7, because that's Satan's role of Antichrist. Part of that fourth beast of Daniel chapter 7, which is exclusively supernatural, and that's the one with the ten horns. That's how we know that this has not happened yet. It will not happen until Satan and his angels are cast unto the earth at the beginning of the five months. Then the deadly wound, then Satan appears at the woe of the sixth trumpet, the woe of the fifth trumpet being whenever the one world political system emerged. And power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months. That's three and a half years, but it's been shortened to two and a half months, a half hour, because it's called the hour of temptation. So what we have here in Daniel 11, going back to Daniel 11 now, 
And verse 25, and he shall stir up his power and his courage against the king of the south, against the Christian nations, with a great army, his locust army you can read of in Revelation chapter 9, the fallen angels. And the king of the south shall be stirred up to battle with a very great and mighty army, but he shall not stand, for they shall forecast devices against him. Yea, they that feed of the portion of his meat shall destroy him, and his army shall overflow and many shall fall down slain spiritually at the sixth trumpet. They're going to battle with armies here. Could this be the deadly wound, and could this EU referendum be a type of the deadly wound, letting you know, perhaps, hypothetically, when the deadly wound takes place? Then shall he return into his land with great riches, and his heart shall be against the holy covenant, talking about the dragon here, and he shall do exploits and return to his own land which is technically Jerusalem, because the Rothschilds, who are the Kenites, own Palestine. It's not a theory. Their picture, the Rothschilds, is on the wall of the Israeli Supreme Court. You can see Rothschild Boulevard. It's pretty much common knowledge that they run Jerusalem. They bought Israel, the land of Israel, that is to say, the proof being the Balfour Declaration. Verse 29, At the time appointed, he shall return and come toward the south, the king of the south being the Christian nations, Jacob, but it shall not be as the former or as the latter. For the ships of Chittim shall come against him, therefore he shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the holy covenant, so shall he do. He shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the holy covenant. That would be the Kenites, those who deny that Jesus is the Christ. And arm shall stand on his part, here's verse 31, and Bullinger backs me up on this. He says in his note in the Companion Bible, this marks the middle of the week, or the last seven years. Now it's five months, so this marks the middle of the five months. This is the sixth trumpet. And arm shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. And that's Satan, the desolator, who comes on the wings of abomination, written of in Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21. There's the middle right there. So as far as looking at this five months we're now in as a type, round about July 15th is what we're looking forward to as the type of the 666. You'll remember that last year it was the Chattanooga shooting and the numbers fit in as far as that went. Jade Helm began on that day and various other things. And here we are about three weeks before the middle of this five-month-long type with the EU referendum. And not only do I think that this may be giving us a time frame of the deadly wound, but it also sets into motion the anti-establishment sentiment that's been going on in America as well as Great Britain. So once again, this type, as I see it, plays into the actuality as usual. But the reason it can't be the deadly wound is because Satan confirms the covenant with many for one week. Now that's been shortened to five months. He has to be on earth first for there to be a one world political system. And the ten horns prove that. I can document it all day long, but I'll leave it at that. If you want to study this further, check out the Daniel 11 hypothesis. I have the book on PDF. I'll leave a link in the description and you can check it out there. Until then... Again, I want to stress the point that we don't know that it will be May through September. We're just looking at May through September of this year, just as we did last year and the year before, as a type of the actual hour of temptation, which we know for a fact has been shortened to five months. The term of the locust, the fallen angels, and those ten horns are fallen angels too. Daniel's fourth beast in Daniel chapter 7 is made up of Satan and his angels exclusively. That's why it says it's diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns, because it's made up of supernatural entities, that is to say Satan and his angels, and they're cast out of heaven at the beginning of the five months, and that begins the hour of temptation, followed by the deadly wound, followed by Satan's appearance as the false Christ in the middle, and then... Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the true Christ returns at the seventh trumpet, which is the third and final woe trumpet. So there you have it, 
Brexit referendum is non-binding. UK Parliament, not voters, has final say. Make of that what you will, but in my opinion, this marks the basic time frame that the deadly wound will transpire, and it lets you in, possibly, on where the deadly wound will come from. After all, Great Britain is part of that King of the South, which is the Christian nations, the scepter of Judah even being there, descendants from King David, and as promised in Genesis 49, the scepter shall not depart from Judah until Shiloh come, until the true Christ returns. So that's what that lion is symbolic of in Daniel chapter 7. All 12 tribes that became the Christian nation, speaking nationally. And in Daniel 7, when you see those three plucked up by the roots, that's when they go into Satan's one world religious system. Those three Christian nations of Ephraim, which is Great Britain, Manasseh, which is America, and Judah, which is Germany. Because if the scepter of Judah is in Great Britain, and the house of Windsor are really Germanic, and they're from King David, what does that say about the ancestry of Judah? Think about it. It's common sense. There are those in the world that claim to be of Judah, but they're not. They're the synagogue of Satan, the sons of Cain who run the four hidden dynasties. At the end of the day, it's common sense that they're not God's chosen people. They're not Christians. So do you really think God is going to play favorites? God is not a respecter of persons, as it's written in the book of Acts. So there you have it. That's what I see this as. But whatever you do, don't take my word for it. Study these things I've mentioned for yourself, chapter by chapter and verse by verse, through the word of God and verify it prayerfully on your own, whether it be true or false. And as Christ said in the last verse of Mark chapter 13, what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Let me warn you, a new world order. And let me warn the nation, a new world order. Let me warn you, a new world order.